Welcome everybody. This is Laura Hendrickson from Open Ocean Marketing. I am here with Kamal Kenyatta, who is from the International Academy of Jazz. You are a pianist, a soprano saxophonist, and a lecturer at the University of California, San Diego. And you are an integral part at the International Academy of Jazz. You've been teaching there for many years now. And thank you so much for joining this Yeah, interview. I'm glad to be I'm here. excited to do this with you. I'm glad to be here. I'd love to just touch base and kind of go into a little bit of your history as far as how you started in music and what was a, a really highlight turning point for you to know that this was your your passion and your purpose and kind of the background of, of how you got to be where you're at now? Well, I, I grew up in Detroit, Michigan, and uh, my mother and father, um, although they weren't musicians, were very, very interested in artistic things and contemporary music of the day and so my mom used to take me to uh, to concerts, to live concerts when I was really young. And as long as I can remember, they listened to, to music at, at home. I, I felt really involved when they listened. And there was a lot of pride in, uh, in the black community in those days for around these entertainers like Nat King Cole and uh, Sarah Vaughan and Billy Eckstein and people like that, you know, of their generation. And I actually grew up thinking because they talked about those people almost on a first name basis, it, like they were some rel relative that I didn't know. I'm talking about I'm two or three years old, hearing these names, Mr. B, Sarah, you know, the Nat King Cole. My folks seemed involved with them almost on a first name basis. So uh, I, I was interested in music from then. And then my mom took me to live performances and that made me really want, I wanted to play bass clarinet because I heard the sound of the bass clarinet at uh, a performance my mom took me to. Oh, that's awesome. And I then did you the end up clarinet. studying that in college or like in your early 20s, 30s? Where did it really kind of ramp up for you? Okay, so at that point, uh, they said, okay, you're too small for a bass clarinet. And uh, I got a clarinet. And uh, then I wanted to play a saxophone. And I wanted to play baritone saxophone. I was attracted to the bigger instruments. And they said, you're too small for that. So they gave me a tenor saxophone. And so I'm in middle school at this point. So I started clarinet in elementary school and saxophone in middle school. Throughout high school, music was an important part of my life. You know, I also have to mention an uncle who had an extensive collection of jazz. And I have to say that jazz was less of a niche music at that point. So a lot of young people who were not musicians it was pretty cool to listen to jazz. My uncle was about 19, 20, and he was my babysitter. And uh, I listened to the music with him. And that's when I really fell in love with jazz. Again, I'm two or three years old at this point. And while still in high school, I did an audition for uh, the great trumpeter, Donald Byrd. And I was hired to, to join him and, and to travel with him. And so that's how it kind of it transformed from an activity uh, just in school to something professional. Oh, yeah, that's great. And, you know, I think being able to travel and be with musicians like that, it's a, like a mentorship in a lot of ways. It sounds like it anyway. Yeah, I mean, in those days, some of the older musicians were pretty hard on we younger guys. So, uh Let's say it was a learning experience, not so much like a straight out mentorship or something like that, because that, <laughs> that guy was, was tough on me. You know, and after and traveling is just traveling itself is, a, is a, an incredible learning uh, experience. Oh, right. And after that, a few years later, I was hired to tour with the Supremes. And that was international travel at that point because we, wow. we played in the UK and we played in Australia. We played it in the Arab world, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. That was an, just, just a, traveling the world is, a, is an education all of its own. Right, I often encourage um, travel abroad programs and all sorts of good stuff like that. I think that traveling really does open up 
so much of your understanding of the world and people and all that good stuff. So that's right. Um, incredible stories, I'm sure, <laughs> from those mm -hmm. experiences. Yes. Now, when did you first learn about International Academy of Jazz and what drew you to that and, and just uh, working with Guy and, and being a part of it all? Well, Guy Gonzalez and I had worked together for many years just as part of the San Diego, you know, working musician scene. And I knew Guy and I knew his reputation. And when he reached out to me to join IAJSD, uh, it was just kind of a, a natural fit. I, I knew him well. You know, I like teaching. I don't, I don't do it because I have to do it. I, I, I like teaching and, and I, like, I like kids. So <laughs> it was really, really kind of natural to join. Yeah, and in doing that are some things that you get to see in these kids when they come in. And some of the kids, I've, I understand, stay for several years. So being that they do stay for several years, what's been your experience in teaching and really actually mentoring uh, the kids? Well, you know, one exciting aspect of, of teaching um, but it's just teaching in general. I listen a lot to, uh, I try to involve the students as much as possible in the process. And that would be like selecting repertoire, um, you know, ideas about how we should go about things, what they want to accomplish. It doesn't take very long, even with younger uh, students, uh, when they feel involved and they feel kind of listened to, for them to, to, to really kind of buy in. So, um, there I am, you know, teaching and learning. Um, I, I learn a lot from them. I learn a lot from them, their taste. And as much as possible, I, I like to see them in, in leadership roles or, or, you know, like shaping, also helping to shape what goes on in the class. And we've got a lot of smart, impressive kids. And uh, yeah, over, over the years, you, can, you, you see improvement, but it seems like f characters form really early. So you, you get a feeling of, you know, who might be a leader and who might be a great team player and these kind of things. You, you just get a feel for uh, children. And, and, and I, you know, I, I try my best to take them as individuals. I don't have a set way to t teach. I try to be sensitive to the needs of the student and react to that. Yeah, that's great. You actually got a really amazing compliment from Matthias Amasi who mm -hmm. has been with you for three years. And he was just really communicating how, how well of a listener you were. And when you did approach things, it was very collaborative. I think that he, he really enjoyed working with you and mm -hmm. um, accelerating his knowledge and just the way you were able to inform him about the way that the, the rhythm goes together and the way that the music works so that he could take the classical learning that he had and transform what was in his head into composing new things on the piano. So he, he was great to talk to recently about that. No, that's um, cool. He's, a, he's an outstanding uh, young musician and also a real, a, a very hard worker. I mean, it, it's, it's really no secret, um, you know, unless you're one of these rarely gifted people who are just blessed with talent, that hard work leads to success in the, in the arts. And, you know, Matthias specifically is a, is a student who is both gifted and is a hard worker. And that combination is unbeatable. Right. Excellent. Now, um, I'd love to ask you a little bit with the experiences that you've had and the growth and all that stuff, what was it like to get a Grammy and that acknowledgement for your own expressions and hard work and all the things that you've done? Like, tell me a little bit about that. Well, the Grammy is really meaningful in the, in the industry, but for me, you know, I'm always just trying to, I love working on teams. I love working together with people. And it was just a culmination of a lot of hard work, in that case with the artist Gregory Porter, who I met as a student, uh, coincidentally. He was my, uh, a student in a class that I was subbing um, before I got my position at UCSD. 
And uh, that's how I met him. And it was a culmination of a lot of work and a lot of years. But, you know, whether I'm working with, with uh, a professional artist like Gregory or, or students, I, I'm just trying to, to, be the, to bring what I can to the team and, and really make the people around me better. And so that's what the Grammy is like a culmination of that kind of thinking. And, you know, at no point were Gregory and I ever working to get a Grammy. Like, okay, if, if we do this song, that'll get, you know, that'll impress. We were just trying to do the best music we could together. Yeah, and I think when you're in that zone, you're not thinking about anything else. You're just enjoying the moment and really engaged and body, mind, soul, so to speak. Right, uh, and, and again, whether it's professionals or middle school people, the, the task is the same. It's like to get the best out of the musicians around you to make the best use of all the people around you, to make everyone feel included. Uh, it, you'd be surprised at how similar the process is on, on any level, or at least it is for me. I don't know if other people sure. approach it that way. No, I think that's similar with, you know, anybody that's basically empowering people to enhance the gifts and talents that they already have. So I, I agree with you completely on that. International Academy of Jazz has now opened the doors for adults. I know that that was a little short-lived at the beginning of the year, but um, maybe for some of the online classes, uh, are you excited about that? And talk to us a little bit about working with adults and what that is going to be for the, for the academy. Well, I mean, I enjoy it because I enjoy uh, sharing knowledge in general. And uh, my process doesn't change that greatly for adults. It's pretty cool when you teach music, uh, most people are there because they want to be there anyway. And that goes for children, adults. And so you don't have this step of, of trying to, to sell people on the idea. They're, they're already there. So uh, working with adults is fun, just like working with, with children. A lot of people are really committed to getting better and having fun with music. And if if I weren't a professional musician, I sure would want to do something with music. So, so, so for some adults who are approaching this as uh, kind of a hobby thing or, or just, just furthering their knowledge, I mean, I really appreciate that because I think that's what I would do if I weren't a professional musician and educator. I think I would sure. just be trying to get better and just learning. Yeah. I, I love when you, I mean, curiosity is, is what drives life, isn't it? And, and without that, we just kind of we don't live. And so I think that's what I see <laughs> you know, right. from the older students. Yeah. Well, and I think it builds community too, because um, you have a group of people that you can see on a regular basis that enjoy similar things. And that's a nice way to connect. And I think that's super important for people to, and it helps them live longer, honestly. Absolutely. So great. In regards to something you feel is um, kind of a niche or like a you have a super expertise in is there any particular part of jazz or music or an instrument that is like really close to your heart at all well um you know i would say um listening to a broad variety of music is is very important and, and i try to um be kind of open in my my approach. So I, I spend as much time listening to music uh, from outside of the States, maybe more <laughs> than I do uh, listening to music from here. And I kind of share that interest with students. And, and it's kind of infectious when they see that there should really be no boundaries in listening. Um, it, it encourages them to, to listen in a broad way. And I mean, honestly, some of the students, um, there's a, a young man called Zen, He's already listening to music from the Balkans and, and from, from Cuba and from around the world and, and very engaged in it. And at no time in history has it been easier to connect with, you know, the whole world musically. And, and even though I don't play all those different styles, um, I, I, I kind of show the students that it's important to be aware of music from around the world and to, to draw influence from, from different places. So that's one, one thing I share. I also, uh, you know, maybe 
my ideas about harmony and chord scale relationships have been helpful to students in the past. And that's something that I kind of emphasize a lot. Awesome. With IAJSD, what would you love to see? Like, is there part of you and your own vision that you are seeing AIJSD and where it's going and all that? No, I just want to kind of continue to spread the, to evangelize for music, huh? And uh, <laughs> to, to, you know, uh, and again, there's so many ancillary benefits uh, uh, with studying music. I mean, there's teamwork, uh, self-esteem grows in, in students, uh, a sense of accomplishment. And so, you know, I kind of, yes, I care greatly about music, but if someone just goes to the program and feels better about themselves, you know, um, or, or, you know, or, or feels that they can accomplish things if they set out, then I'm, I'm happy about that too. I, I mean, maybe I care more, more about um, helping people be good people than just good musicians. If you can do both, wonderful. Yeah. But uh, again, these ancillary benefits should not be ignored because you can, students can generalize uh, good teamwork to anything that they do in life. Oh, that's great. Yeah, so I guess with, with everything going on, do you happen to have any projects that you're working on currently or albums or yes, anything um, like that? You know, there have been two, two great uh, albums that I worked on recently, All Rise with Gregory Porter, and then um, there's a vocalist called Paulette McWilliams, and she worked with um, Stevie Wonder. She worked with Luther Vandross. She was she sang with Luther Vandross for 20 years. She worked with Donny Hathaway. And at 71, she she began a solo project. It is incredible. Both of the the releases of these two projects have, has been delayed by the pandemic, and so um, I'm excited. Hopefully, at the end of the summer, that they they will both be released. Uh, there's another uh, young artist, well, young to me, <laughs> uh, called um, Lauren Talese from Philadelphia, or, or living in Philadelphia. She's actually from Cleveland. Uh, uh, she's an amazing singer, uh, winner of a Sarah Vaughan Award, and uh, we're, we're working on a project together. I'm involved in the, the writing and the production and arranging, and uh, she is a joy to work with and just... Uh, on top of being a great, sorry, on top of being a great musician, just a very smart, uh, big picture kind of thinker. And uh, I really enjoy working with, with people like that. Wow, that's exciting. Yeah, we'll be looking forward to sharing those bits of, of pieces and things as they get produced. Very good. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you, Kamal. Is there anything else that you can think of that would be good for everybody to know about um, with this interview and, and talking about the International Academy of Jazz and, and taking students? We've got uh, kids that are ages 10 to 18 uh, that work with you. They're placed in small ensembles for the uh, Saturday sessions and get to learn from you and then the adults of course and so we are promoting classes for online classes as well as the fall and the annual programming well what everybody should know is um this is not just this is a fun experience because actually we we prepare for performance i mean the way that i run things it's not just me like dispensing knowledge, you know, I mean, I, I do some of that, of course, sure. but um, we're really there preparing for a concert and that's the excitement. I mean, you're, you're going to get a chance to play for um, other students and your family and friends. And uh, it, it should be, uh, it should be a really fun experience, uh, making connections, making musical connections, and then actually putting what you learn into practice and, um, uh, and again, the, the other instructor, Tonga Ross Mao, is, he's amazing, and, and he plays many instruments. And um, actually, Tonga came to study with me a few years ago, 
and I wasn't sure why. He came for two lessons, and then I said, man, let's just, <laughs> let's just make music together, because he was so advanced when I met him. He was just, he was out of college when I first met him, and, um, but I found him very advanced, and I liked the way he thought about music, and um, I asked him to join us, and he's, he's been an incredible fit. Uh, he's a, a great musician, and he, you know, he has the heart, too. He cares about students. That's important to me. Yeah, I think that really shines. I was able to go to the December concert in 2019. And um, as you mentioned, each of the kids, just their personalities were just shining right through the music. And it was just so much fun to see them play. And um, working with Guy Gonzalez and International Academy of Jazz, we're definitely looking forward to kind of creating those opportunities for the concerts, but also just different gigs that are around town with people that enjoy the jazz and the music and collaborating, even with Nathan East. Uh, mm -hmm. So we're looking forward to some really amazing opportunities with the, the group and uh, just want to th say thank you so much for doing the interview with me and okay. helping us uh, nice share share you with with our community and, and all that you do for the kids okay. and the adults. All right. so thank you. Thank you so much. much. Thank you. <laughs>